Hello everyone, and welcome back to the most recent episode of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. Um, I don't have any real announcements to make, so we're going right into the station's log, which is going to be Lieutenant Demos. Chief Security Officer, personal log, star date 83357.6. Short log today, it's going to be bullet points. We got the Graviton catapult up and running. We've seen an increase in population and transit, which has made my job a more interesting nightmare. We've had several smuggling attempts from uh, ships coming through the gates and on the way back to either the Alpha Quadrant or some results. We have in implemented new procedures now for customs check which has been very popular amongst the merchant. Not really. A bit of good news, though. Ensign Usha has managed to convince me to run some experiments. Well, she's running them on me, I should say. She's attempting to access the quantum tunneling system uh, built in with my frame, basically called the Transmat. She is attempting to isolate and find a way to call home, essentially. Her, Kivon, and a few others have been helping with this, and after this log, I'm to report to the science lab for the sixth or seventh attempt. Every time I get in there, though, I feel a little more, and I, I feel a little more uneasy. The contraptions she's designed seems to be growing much like the Borg superstructure. A little unnerving, but she seems to have good heart and good intent. So I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and keep trying until something explodes. Hopefully, not me. End log. Very well. So we, our first scene is going to take place in the cybernetics lab. Where uh, Ensign Usha, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, and Spe Specialist Zak have spent all more most about half their shift rigging up a complex cobweb of uh, micros ah, microscopically attuned uh, multispectral sensors around one of their quantum field anal analyzers. And and Lieutenant Demos walks through through the door and all were all techno babble stops. And they all look at you. And Sanusha speaks. Ah, the guest of honor has arrived. Hello. And she's so. Like, well, she looks at the uh, two engineers. Well, I'd like to say that I'm more optimistic this time, but I've said that the last five times too. Maybe if someone, and she looks at special Zock was actually able to differentiate a quantum analyzation matrix and a self and a self eh, self sealing stem bolt and not hand me the wrong tools when I need them Watch your turn lassie Yes 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 we've I've had nothing but your uh, I've put up with your unique sense of uh, what's the phrase I'm, unique sense of conversation for the last six hours honestly I'd fight back but I know that would just make you happy so let's get this over with Mr. Demos if you could please step into the web and yeah, try to pull okay. out one of your what, whichever weapon you like All right. And, uh, yeah, he'll get in here. Yep, that works perfect. Yeah, you know, he'll walk on in and get all hooked up. <laughs> like, okay. Well, let's see. The other test typically been Thunderlord, so let's try this one. He's gonna reach to his right side, and he's just gonna try and make the motion of him grabbing a pistol. Okay. Uh, you reach down. You, and in one fluid movement, you grab a holster of your pistol and whip it and pull it out and point it in a direction which is obviously safe for you to be pointing a weapon probably to the floor uh, yeah. there is a brief pause as Ensign Usha just sort of 
smirks to herself and says, I must admit, I was unaware that a rolled up newspaper was a weapon among your people. And as uh, you, ah, and Mr. Demos, as you get, as you understand what you are holding is not your pistol. Instead, it is a, it's very similar to a glossy poster, all rolled up, uh, neat and tidy. Uh, very similar to a, uh, tr it's a translucent vellum style, laminated paper kind of material, used among your people to transmit uh, text messages over long distance, where standard communication is not possible. Um, and you are going, and because it's written in your language, no one else can read it, but you can, and there is going to be a handout showing up for you in a couple minutes known as message to Demos. You may read it and react to it as you see fit. Okay. Meanwhile, if I could please ask Mr. Keevan or Mr. or Mr. Zack, whichever you like, to roll me a insight plus engineering test. Uh, this will just be difficult zero. And anything along the lines of particle physics or experimental technology or those would be good things to use here. Okay, yeah, the handout is available. Yeah, I'll just go with my straight inside engineering. I don't have anything fun like that. All right, have a roll. And that's two momentum for you. Oh. Uh, Zach Sorry. beat you to it, looks like. Oh, yeah, that works. <laughs> Um, as Lieutenant Keevan goes to analyze the readings, your uh, the diminutive th ah the diminutive and I've just blanked on the species name. <laughs> the diminutive engineer just bumps Tellerite. There we go. The diminutive Tellerite pushes you out of the way and goes in to analyze the re the readings. And Special Zach, you realize that. There's nothing really new from the um, from the trans ah nothing really new when compared to the previous uh, sensor logs. Alas, whatever technology they use, it's either too quick or too fine to be used uh, to track to track back to their homeworld, either unintentionally or intentional. And you guys are all now seeing Lieutenant Demos reading a newspaper that he has materialized out of nowhere. Um, the uh, my other hand, my left hand's on the little railing there mm -hmm. for the uh, structure, and I'm just crushing it as I'm reading it more and more. Um, with my neural connection with the station, I'm immediately accessing. Uh, stellar topography and attempting to map up this location, like just trying to match it. Okay. If uh, if it's anything we've seen in any of the uh, images we have of the star fields. All right, that makes that have ever been sense. viewed. Um, I, if our science officer was here, that would be a test that he would do, but he is not. So I'm just going to quickly roll for him. And if someone can get get me the station and roll me a uh, computers plus science for an assist. I can get the station. And it's only going to be a difficulty one test. And that is two successes from Jarg. Nice. Pardon me. Uh, Jarg... The station says no. Yeah, station says no. Thankfully, Jarg says yes. Uh, you get one momentum out of the deal. Uh, someone needs to be keeping track of momentum, please. Got that it. Be... Okay, uh, you're at three so far, Dalrum. Got it. <clears throat> Uh, yes, the station does have uh, stellar cartography logs for this. Uh, it is in the uh, very edge, or far edge, of the Beta Quadrant, at the very edge of the galaxy ring, and it does appear to match up with uh, sensor records gained from uh, the forays into Jin Sul space. Uh, that ha would have been accessed fairly quickly through Gate 12, uh, sadly, the Nighthawk had destroyed Gate 12, 
or at least one of the internal tunnel support structures, uh, thereby denying direct access to it. Uh, however, the station is able to give you a qu one that would take about three days through a nearby and at maximum warp, assuming you take a regular starship. Yeah. Um... I kind of hope you do, otherwise they wouldn't have much to do. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, as soon as Demos uh, gets information, he looks up at everyone, and he's just marching right past them. Like, he's uh, he's not even being delicate about unhooking himself. Um, he is, unfortunately, going to be pissing off Usha, being this, he is just pulling all those strands as he's walking forward. Like, he's not disengaging. Oh, yeah, Usha is... Uh... Come, Lieutenant, if you could please... What? What, um, what do you think you're is... doing, lad? Don't even acknowledge her. I just work. Rami, get me Verity. Yes, I'll, I'll be... I'm going to be right on Demos's heels. Okay. He is making a beeline right for uh, the shuttle bay. Two days of work. Just what I wanted. Well, I love the Dillerite. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, Specialist, as she, uh, as Demos, I like to think that the doors don't even open up fast enough for Demos and you just plow right through them. Um, oh, he just grabs them and forces them open. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, Specialist, it doesn't... I highly doubt we're going to get another test of this. May as well just work on disassembling the rig and hope that whatever we have found will earn us some minor accolades in some scientific or engineering journal down the road. Sure. You know what? I'll be at the bar. Well, she pats you on the head. And I'm going to be wherever on the station is, as far away from the bar as possible. Okay, so, um, what we're going to have now is a very awkward turbo lift conversation, because I think it's hilarious. As Demos gets into the turbo lift, Lieutenant Commander Keevan jumps in with him. I don't actually have a turbo lift. Yeah, he's pacing around inside there. Demos, what is going on, man? My people need help. I just... this, and he holds it up. Um, the language, I'd say, if you might recognize it, it's... some of it looks Greek, but not all of it. It looks like it's a, a, an offshoot or a very strange evolution of it. You're like, they, um... They need help. They're being attacked. There's something eating a star. Sound familiar? Vaguely familiar, yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of things, so... Now, whose people? My people. The Exos. Your people. The sh yeah, the ship we arrived in on, apparently... Most of it's damaged to the point where they can't really use it, but... If what this message is true, and if they're still there, they need help. I need to get them to the Let the and... captain know about this. Yeah. Well, how about this? Demos to Dalrum. This is Dalrum, go ahead. I have a massive situation, I'm requesting a leave of absence. Do you mind coming up and explaining? You can meet me in Shuttle Bay. I'm on my way. I just look. Um, you have the bridge, like number three, <laughs> which would be Darval. At this rate, you may as well be Lieutenant Commander. But yes, whoever's at the tactical station uh, subtly, knowl subtly knowledges, and that is how it is. A few minutes later, everybody is down at the shuttle bay. Excellent. Did they get a hold of Verity? Uh, yes, Verity is currently on the transwarp hub, but she is able to answer. Hmm. 
Yeah, if uh, I can chat with her, I would. Okay. Uh, as as you are wandering down, uh, sh- her voice fills your uh, head. <laughs> what is it, Demos? Hey, v- I'm going to send you some information. I need the closest conduit and the fastest vessels you got. I need help with my people. I don't have any s- vessels left, Demos, aside from the few support vessels. As per our agreement, we had to dismantle all, all cubes and spheres. Any of them able to contain cargo? Lithium, specifically? Lithium? Why would you Lithium need particles, lithium? I should say. Why would you need lith... Anyway... I mean, yeah, I have... We... The Interlink has a few uh, probes. They've, they're currently flying around, but I could redirect one as needed. Good. I'm going to send you information right now, and he's just going to upload the information there. Okay. Uh, if you're going to tackle that problem that way, that will count as an advantage, and thus will cost two momentum. So you're down to one. Yeah. And uh, he's also going to call it a uh, decon. Oh, decon's... Hmm, I'm sorry. Decon's already uh, waiting for you at the shuttle. Like, Decon, get the engines ready to go. Of course. It might be a one way, so don't feel bad about pushing the engines this time. One way. Questions later. Understood. <clears throat> okay, Demo. <laughs> Demo, this is not going to be a one way trip. If anybody's going to come and help your people, I'm I'm with you. And it's about this time that Dalrum uh, is perspiring a little as he is basically sprinting, uh, enters the shuttle bay. I run up to him. All right, fill me in here. Made contact with my people. They need help, and I'm fearful that whatever they're dealing with isn't nice. Evident by the way the message is sent, but they're also possibly in Junsul space. Great. That, that's not good. No. And I have a dumb idea. Explain said dumb idea. I'm going to mag clock those clamps to the uh, new ship we got, and I'm going to attempt to take it into slip space with me. The Aryan? Yes. And I don't believe it has quantum drives. Narrator? No, it does not. Timos, well, as many things as I've seen on that ship, I don't know if that's going to be able to deal with a quantum slipstream. But without a slipstream, it won't be able to keep up with to get to to respond in time. Is what I I'm need taking to get it. there. Yes, I need to get there as quickly as possible. Uh, I start thinking. Kivan, could a slip? Do the slip nears have a uh, slipstream? McCall. Yes, they do. That's the whole purpose of why they were out here to scout the transwarp gateway in the first place. All right, I'll turn to Kivan. Can a slip near on point? as well as the Apollo in front of the Aryan create a big enough corridor to have the Aryan follow in close proximity? Uh, oh, is... that... Reason engineering difficulty of one, please. Uh, if you have uh, propulsion systems, quantum slipstream drive, uh, insane ideas, or Starship Voyager uh, the, as focuses, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, none of the. <laughs> can ah, I... uh, I was gonna say, could I assist? But uh, apparently, that's yes, not needed. Uh, well, it kind of is. Cause... Oh yeah, because you can't. Because he has no. He didn't get yeah. the success. So I'm like, I have my inside air engineering is not great, but it's like a tw- it's a twelve or eleven. I mean, I will let that succeed at cost because I like threat. And this episode might get me to spend a lot of it, so I'll take it. Um, Jesus. 
Uh, Keevan, as you were busy yeah. studying up the uh, quantum slipstream drive um, for this particular station, uh, you stumbled upon a peculiar report from the Starship Voyager, where it attempted a very similar f fashion, um, but uh, it had to be aborted due to uh, some issue, and after that the Temporal Prime Directive takes over, and you're not entirely sure why. Uh, you're not, you weren't cleared for that, and you had far too many other things on the go. However, uh, if Voyager could do it with the primitive um, systems at its disposal, uh, properly configured ships should be able to. It's possible. We might actually have to use two slip nears and the Apollo to basically create a big enough wake in, it, in front of the area. Well, the other idea I had, too, was using that star we have out there as a, um, well, the nearest star, I would say. Geodesic fold. Downside, all organics would liquefy. Plus side, me and Decon would be fine. Yeah, let's go with option A. If I'm going to help, I prefer not to go as a puddle. Same. Okay. Sounds like we have a game plan. Let's assemble the senior staff, get a crew on the slip nears needed, and get the Aryan staff. We need to inform the captain that we're going for a rescue mission because, as per Starfleet protocol, a distress call is a distress call, and we must respond to all distress calls. Well, I'm just a lieutenant. I can still take a couple more demotions. <laughs> Technically, we don't. We wouldn't even need it. It's a distress call. We received a distress call. Per Starfleet, Starfleet protocol, we respond to all distress calls received. Mm -hmm. uh, how it's received is not defined in the rules. The captain. I'm going to get the Apollo ready. All right. You go get the Apollo ready. Okay, so what is... And as much as I really hate to take this, because I thought I prepared myself beforehand, we're going to have to take a very quick break, be... a very quick bio break, because the GM kind of really needs it. Sorry. Really Can sorry. Uh, we'll be back in hopefully less than uh, seven minutes. No worries. All right. And we're back. Um, so sorry about that. Anyways, what? Yes, Demos. Want want to give you? Is it is it one momentum for this, or is it two for um, uh, armor? Um. Oh, for S. Uh, so if you t decide to take uh, body armor, then that is an opportunity cost, which means I get more threat. And okay. I believe that is an it gets me an opportunity cost of one. Okay. Yeah, um, for like flavor and wine and stuff like that, like I'm gonna, you can take the threat. Uh, Demos is putting on his, uh, the armor he was found in. Ooh. So he is no longer wearing Starfleet regulation stuff on board the Apollo. Okay. Um, I don't seem to have that part in my notes, so I'm just gonna call it Opportunity Cost 1 to keep the plot moving forward. Okay. So, on, which also means that everyone else can now take that armor at no extra cost. So, you know, just in case. It's opportunity one and escalation one. Ah, there we go. But resistance too, everybody. Woo! All right. All righty. Wahaha. So, we're going to cut to the Arion's Bridge. 
as you depart the or, uh, uh, the USS Arian is in a tight patrolling uh, orbit around the transwarp hub sorry just getting myself mentally back into the game so I don't stutter stammer or pause as much as I am when uh, Commander Dalrum you have of step in and officially take command of the ship for its briefing. Two pilots on board two slipnears are dispatched to fly alongside port starboard and the US or not the USS the SS Apollo comes in uh, directly off your uh, forward bow. I just looked at mud put all everyone on screen for the briefing. All right now uh, what begin and a conference call is begun. Uh, Demos in one, uh, two NPC pilots on the other s uh, and s split screen. Ah. <laughs> it's a Zoom call. Yeah, it's a Zoom call. <laughs> oh, All no, right. everyone's going to see this information. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Demos, you have point because you know where we're going. This is strictly a... Uh, rescue mission. We received a distress call and we gotta respond as all Starfleet protocol says. The captain has been informed. We are uh, hopefully not going to have to engage in every anything. Uh, have all medical personnel on standby. We don't know what we're going getting into. Demos, you're in charge of the route. Take us out. Uh, he's going to look to the two slipnears and he's going to instruct them to be positioned um, in front, but off like off the side of the front, so like left and right. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to get really close to the Arion, uh, underneath it essentially from the saucer, um, and he's just going to radio Mud. And he's like, Mud, ever been on a chariot race before? No. Okay. Well. Don't go off readings. Go off feeling. Sir. And he's going to message to the two Slipner pilots, and he's going to link up the Apollo with them. And, oh, uh, who has the Brog probes, by the way? Are they, like, huge probes, like the ones we see in Star Trek Online? Or are they, like, the... They're the ones, that, ones that... on Seen on Star Trek Voyager. I think they're about scale 3, scale 4. Okay. Uh, so... Hmm. Can the Arion hold them? I don't think so. No. Uh, no, they're too big. Well, no, that... The Arion does have the expanded shuttle bays. Uh, so if you are willing to... Uh, forego some of your shuttle support, then yes, the Arion could probably cram... A Borg probe it... back there with zero space for anything else. We're scale four, so it pretty much takes up the ship. Yeah. I say shove it in there and let it grok. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. Sounds like sounds like we're doing that. Okay. Sure. Uh, USS Arion is foregoing shuttle support for the mission and instead has a Borg probe uh, whose pilot promises not to assimilate anyone. <laughs> Tell her why. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Anyways, let's just keep. Let's just move. Um, <laughs> okay. So, so I'm going to also message uh, Kivon. Mm -hmm. uh, Kivon, we gotta make sure our warp bubble are all the same. So if you wouldn't mind passing <sighs> control off the engineering systems to the Apollo. I'll do that, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on it just for extra support and a second set of eyes. Understood. Okay. And yeah, we're going to fly on into the corresponding uh, opening. Okay. Uh, so I'd like whoever is doing con, so that's probably decon, or you, whichever one's piloting, uh, will do me. a control plus con test, please. And the SS Apollo uh, can assist with computers plus con. Right, I'm and, also near a link to the Apollo, just yep. to declare that. Understood. And 
because of just how everything is set up, if someone could also assist with the USS Arion uh, computers plus, uh, yeah, computers plus con. I have what the difficulty Arion is this? Uh, this is going to be a difficulty three. Precision maneuvering, that brings it down to two. Yeah, um, a little loose on the definition, but I'll let that fly. Arion got a success. Okay, that's one for the Arion. Uh, I'm going to use a momentum to buy an extra dice. Sure. He... Who has oh. the Apollo? I got the... Oh, um, someone can roll the Apollo. I'll get, it. I'll get the Apollo. All right. Ah. Wow. wow. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, what does my neural link let me do? It rerolls one of them. I believe it lets you reroll one of them. Yes. <laughs> well, the Apollo's got one. <laughs> well, we got two successes. Now we just need the, uh, Demos to get yeah. a, a success. That's and a that's, good way of doing it. That's a critical. So, oh, like, yeah. a total of four successes. So one momentum. Uh, two, because I lowered the difficulty. Oh, of course. My apologies. So, two, two momentum. And a... Uh, you guys don't even bother exiting the uh, Carceri Nebula before engaging in this potentially risky, you know, possibly fatal, rarely ever attempted, and for damn good reason, uh, attempt of linking three quantum slipstream drives together. But, with the pilots, or with Demos leading the charge, and the two pilots... And their slip nears providing as additional computational support. Uh, you enter the tunnel. Now, it's going to be roughly about a six hour trip. Uh, if there's anything people want to do or say during the trip. Um, and I'm hearing someone knocking at my door. They want to say something about a trip. Yeah, they <laughs> probably do. I'm think I'm going to have to go answer this, guys. I'm sorry. This is not a good hey, day. No There's one super continent around one super... There has to be something. Uh, and I'm back. Sorry about that. I have absolutely no idea what I heard, but apparently it wasn't someone at my door. Was it or opportunity was knocking? <laughs> if it was opportunity knocking, it can wait its damn turn. <laughs> make a note from when that happened so I can edit out that pause. Okay. Now, uh, time in flight. Six hours. Does anybody wish to do anything? And... Keevan's going to want to communicate with Demos and find out any more that we can about his... Uh, now you cut off there. Any more about uh, what? Your people. Ah. Yeah, uh, Demos would be at the helm. Um, so yeah, you just see him sitting down in his cockpit. What's up, Keevan? So what do we need to know about your people? I mean, what kind of possible distress are they in that they're going to need our help. Well, if, if they're on the Elysium, they're probably... Well, it sounds like they don't have weapons. It sounds like they don't have much of anything. They managed to keep the Harler ship running, which is good. But if they're saying out a distress call, either the numbers are dwindling, or they don't have much to begin with anyways. 
So maybe a handful of survivors. I don't know. Yikes, and we're just not going to know about the full details until we actually arrive on the site. But from what I understand, as they tried to make contact with these species, they're eating the star. And, uh, well, their contact has been met with either silence or hostile actions. Right now, they're holding the line. We should probably be prepared for hostile action just in case, so we're definitely going to need to keep you and the Apollo, you know, as far back behind the Aryan as possible, just because you're going to be the brunt of getting us back quickly. Yeah. We'll see what happens when we get there. If, um... If I can make a quick landing, I can try and get as many people aboard my vessel as possible. But even outside of Slipstream, this is still one of the fastest ships we have here. Most maneuverable, too, next to the Slipnears. That's true. I'm just... If you need extra backup or I need anything, I will stick with you, man, because I can only imagine what... If somebody, if my family were in trouble, what would be going through my head? So, you know, I got you. Thanks, Kevin. All right, let's keep this thing going. All right. Uh, anybody else have any scenes they'd like to do? It doesn't sound like it. Okay. After six hours of a fairly smooth trip, uh, you emerge at at the designated coordinates which is not there here uh, you emerge at the edge of a uh, fairly standard system uh, it appears to be a uh, red dwarf at the center uh, three planets a the first one is a class B so similar enough to Mercury the outer of which is a class J Jupiter class or Jupiter size and the middle is a class Y demon planet which currently has your interest um, well two things of interest the first is that the red dwarf sun is visibly draining of color um, you're too far away to get a proper visual on it but your sensors do indicate that there is a massive ship that is currently draining much of the stars thermal and infrared and well, every other energy spectrum output the one that currently is of interest is the demon planet or class y demon planet with a similar supercruiser uh, orbiting over top of it as you watch you do see it sporadically lancing a giant beam of uh, purple energy down to the surface. And if... So... Comms, get Demos on screen. Demos will pop up. Commander? You're seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah... Who wants to bet that the supercruiser that's attacking the planet is attacking the people, your people underneath it? I already figured that. I'm going down. You wouldn't happen to have and a cloaking device on that ship. Just got speed. Be careful. We'll hang out towards the edge of the system to hopefully not pique their interest. Because we know that we can't stand up much of a fight against these people. No, un no unnecessary risk. Let us know when you're uh, on or your way back and we will get into formation for Slipstream. Roger. We might be able to talk our way out of this, hopefully. Oh, the we alternative are is going to be nasty for them. Fair enough. We are in a diplomatic ship. Let's see if it, if we need to, let's use its all of its abilities. And he'll just close communications as he um, turns off life support and everything else in the ship that's not needed for... Um, that's not needed at all. Yeah, he'll... Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, as soon so as the communication cuts, I will order us to tactical yellow alert and to stay at the edge um, outside of the Class J orbit to not provoke anything. We're just kind of there. All right. Um, I have Ensign Usha in the science console, unless... Or do you want someone else to be in science? Or tactical, for that matter? Um, um, for tactical... Um, I'll look at our supporting characters and put one on board. Fair enough. Okay, so... Uh, if I could please ask Mr. Demos to roll me a daring plus con test. And the okay. SS Apollo can assist with engines plus con. Uh, this is going to be just a difficulty one. And I should mention this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum. Got it. Okay. And again, neural linked to yep. the. Oh, I'm not there. <laughs> oh, whoops, wrong con officer. And that is two um, from you. And who's got the ship? I say Sulkin. All right. Yeah. Uh, gate jumper, care to roll the SS Apollo? Yeah, are you there, buddy? So again. Sorry, muted. <laughs> it happens. Uh, engines con for the SS Apollo, please. Does it say? Except you're welcome. <laughs> Such a good movie. Uh, Apollo, I'm afraid, does not assist. But that's fine. Uh, the SS Apollo p manages to evade what little fire is being exchanged from two forces of tit uh, Titanic in scope. As you uh, enter the atmosphere, there's a verdant beam of uh, disruptor fire from the surface lancing up, and it impacts upon the Jin Sul's armor. And at this close range, you can see that the Jin Sul uh, ship is heavily damaged. Uh, not entirely sure how damaged it is, but it's pristine, smooth, purple uh, superstructure is scored black and has been chipped out in what must have been a titanic firefight as you punch through the R as following the trajectory of the cannon shot back to its course uh, you breach the surface of a class Y demon world which is not the nicest of images but hey <laughs> Uh, so, uh, demon class planet is mostly reds and browns in color. Uh, the atmosphere is about as colorful. It's apparently a fairly clear day as the murky red sky uh, turns the wa waning s the waning red sun a sicky pale white. But it's enough to uh, glint off the shining gold exterior of what you recognize to be a good portion of your of the Exo's ship, the Elysium. It did uh, a quick circle from above. Realize you realize that the ship has landed, which is not something I believe it is typically able to do under normal circumstances, and it has left a good-sized crater where it did so. Um, it's been here a little while, apparently, as can be t as can be shown from the planet. Uh, covering up a good portion of it. Or it's possible that it was done this way just as an act of camouflage. Uh, several gun barrels are pointing upward, uh, several of which have been destroyed. Um, portions of the ship which you recognize as the, com the command spires seem to have been blown up, taken out, or heavily scored. And your se uh, you don't need a sense or a sensors check to realize that there's not a heck of a lot of power in this thing. 
Uh, most of its exterior, all of its exterior lights are dead. Uh, if you're not seeing any shields, uh, engine output is zero, despite the fact that it does have engines. So that's that's a thing. And for those of you who are not unfamiliar with the Exo's uh, tr home ship, the Elysium, this thing is literally a metropolis in space. Um, I would say it's at least, what, 20 kilometers long? Yeah, roughly around there. Yeah. It's not that long anymore. It's been knocked down to about 15-ish, and several of its superstructure buildings are no longer present, but yeah, it's a monster. And that's what um, you see as you come, as you breach the clouds. Just gotta look at Midas. Like, Midas get on comms and start hailing them. Acknowledged. It's good to be home. It is. Let's make sure we have a home after this, so. My. Well, this is Demos of the Elysium. Is anyone down there? Uh, there is a, st a burst of static punctuated by another uh, energy shot coming from one of its cannons aimed skyward. Uh, not aimed at you, obviously. And r about two minutes after that, you hear a very gravelly mechanical voice. Demos, is that one? You're one of us. I have yes, not... Chief Technician of Subsection Alpha 1J, Engineering. Cool. Yeah. I'm Galax. You've probably heard of me. I run this damn armory, trying to keep it operational for all you needy children. Is that why I've been getting weapons instead of my tools? Is that what you... If you wanted tools, you should have re properly recalibrated your tesseracts. Engineering yeah, is... Yeah, the engineering tesseracts are not what they were. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any equipment to do any recalibrations. I am thankful to the hop to engineering, or the armor, I should say, instead of the science division. Your guns are impeccable. Good. I'm glad that there are people who still appreciate this form of art. Hmm. And you read... Uh, sorry, I'll butt in slightly. Uh, you, rem you remember Galax, even though you've probably never met. Uh, he's a cantankerous old uh, Gen 2 who somehow never went fully insane. But he's a master when it comes to weaponry. And that's pretty much where he's been for the last millennia or so. Okay. I'm looking for permission to bring down my ship. We could attempt a hot wire to from its engines to the Elysium systems. Give it an extra boost for now. Did you bring the lithos? Oh, was it lithos, GM? Uh, lithium is the is the scientific term but they it's lithos okay. in greek therefore i call it lithos right. why not okay but yeah we have a uh, a fair sized probe with a bunch of it stored in another ship just because of this fire happening though between you and the annoying purple thing in the sky we are holding off in the distance right now uh, so you got me really okay I'll take the help I can get. And it's at this point you hear the uh, telltale sign of one of the assault cannons going off in the uh, in the distance. More of these damn spiders from Hades. It's a shame they bl It's a good thing they blow up nice. Run a cow! Prep landing bay three. I don't care how many of these damn things you have to fight through to get him. Looks like we're getting some help, boys. And with that, he... And I'm... Yeah. Shuttle Bay 3, if you still remember the way. I do. Good. 
Uh, He's gonna send out a radio to well, a message to uh, Dalrum. Demos to Dalrum. This is Dalrum. Go ahead. Well, right now they're engaging the Jansul. They need assistance, and I'd rather have them have the help now than wait. I'm gonna try and hotwire the Apollo into their power grid, but it's not gonna be enough. Not for a long stay. Uh, what do you need from us? The lithium probe. But it needs to get here safely. We'll get... Kiva and I will work on a way to mask the probe so it the Jinsu will don't attack it to get it to you. Understood. Okay. So we're going to cut ourselves to the engineering area of the Arion. Where... Jay's in charge. Yes. Um, and because I feel bad for not really having a good medical episode, we'll bring on a specialist, Zach, once again. And let's see. So we will have Kivon, Dalrum, if he wants to be here, mm -hmm. and specialist Zach. Under the engineering section, there he is. And the bat the batch of you are looking over the um, sensors or the uh, s ah the bunch of you ah let me start this again the batch of you are looking over the specifications of the roughly three tons of lithium that are currently sitting in a Borg probe that is currently taking up the entirety of the Ariane shuttle bay uh, lithium is an extremely volatile element and due to its nature it's impossible to replicate let alone transport through transporters and three tons of it is enough to light up pretty much any sensor from within a five light year radius so gentlemen do let's even get this in here very let carefully and with a little bit of um, extra work. But now our job is to see if we can hide the probe from the Jinsul systems to deliver it down to the Exos. Do we have any idea? Well, I've only got one major idea, and that is basically to make it look like any kind of piece of matter that might be going at the planet naturally. Make it use its own kinetics with a little help from the um, tractor beam, a reverse tractor beam, to kind of send it into the towards the planet. So make it look like an asteroid that has been jettisoned by the Class J planet that we are literally sitting next to. Exactly. It's just a matter of how can we keep it protected on its way down, especially on the way straight down. You're and then thinking we'll about throwing it out with the trash. <sighs> Something like that. We just got to make sure it doesn't go boom. And that's the only thing I'd be worried about it having be the exos being able to stop it once it gets into the atmosphere, but before it gets down to where they're at. Well, I gotta trust that they can do that. Our job is to deliver it. If we can get it close enough and then be able to let it go without getting it's going to hit terminal velocity one way or the other, but the less amount of time terminally it can go, the better their chances to stop it. We just need to let oh. Demos know ahead of time. True. But we also have to remember, this is a Borg Pro. It's designed to make planet fall. That is very true. I, I do forget that sometimes. I forget it. I never liked the Borg probes. Well, if we can somehow program the probe to 
go there on its own because it is relatively self-propulsion. We just need to somehow figure out how to disguise it so the Jinsoul just thinks it's a rock. If we can get some material to kind of go along with it, almost make it its own kind of comet. I go over to the com or I hit my clown badge. Dolrum to the bridge. Uh, this is Usha. What can I do for you, Dolrum? Sir? Usha, Usha, can you get the Slipnears to collect some space rock rubble in the area? Don't get have them get noticed by the Jinsul, but we're going to try to disguise the probe as a rock making planet fall, and having some other rocks to go along with it makes it less suspicious. Very well, sir. I shall commence with Operation Pebble Gathering. 10-4. I looked at Kivan and Zach. So we got the, the other rubble figured out. Now, we got to figure out if, how to reprogram the visuals of the probe. I just wish that we had an interlink here on the ship that would be able to help us. Probe can be flying manual. I don't know about you, Zach, but I prefer not to land on a class Y planet with a bomb. Then you have it lit till you ride a bomb. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Specialist. I will take your word for that one. I have done enough living for my lifetime. I think there should be a way for us to kind of make a crude holograph to cover the outside surface to make it look a little less like a cute, like, like a probe and make it look more like a piece of rock. Let's do that. Okay. Give me 20 minutes. I can easily jerry-rig something to make a holographic shell around it. Well, if you got the skills, I'll help you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if Zach is going to take the lead on this, uh, I would like to have a control plus engineering. And either Keevan or... Uh, no, let's have Keevan assist with a similar thing, control engineering. This is going to be a difficulty two. Can I talk you into daring, since we're trying to do this in a hurry, <laughs> now it's not being checked? Okay, if you're not going to be gentle with it, uh, yeah, uh, you can roll daring. Does anything about me sign gentle? I would not know. I have not talked to any of your exes. <laughs> okay, uh, so then I'm going to have to roll Daring Engineering as well? Yes, please. Okay, Mr. Zach, we, let's get this done, but let's try to get it done in at least a little bit of a con controlled... I'm trying to inspire him. Focus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you say that as he's already pulling out the duct tape. Well, that's not going to help. Okay. Dolrum can also assist if needed. Because mm -hmm. my daring engineering is a 14. Ah. I'll allow that. The perks of me growing up on a station to a chief engineer. <laughs> nice. All right. So that is two from him and one from Dolrum. So you get one momentum about after that. Uh, so you have rigged up a um, very basic hologra holographic generator and sensor mask unit. It is not pretty. It's not going to uh, survive long, but you don't need it to. Uh, you strap it to the Borg probe and are preparing to jettison. 
where at this point we are going to cut down to the planet. And Demos, you said that you're going to uh, head uh, basically just jumper cable your ship into the sh into the station or into the Elysium. Yes. Okay. I don't have a s fancy smancy thing, so I'm going to do this. Uh, the in the interiors of the Elysium are broken up into several well, several thousand, I really should say, several themes. Uh, the one for the general civilians is fairly uh, ornate, if somewhat plainly colored. Uh, darks uh, are dark contrasts against white uh, highlight match many uh, intricate patterns, and it, uh, lights, even though they're currently dimly shining due to the uh, lack of power, would have been emanating a very comforting warmth back in the day. And it is through uh, Shuttle Bay 3 that you find... It is through these corridors that you find Shuttle Bay 3. And you are met with... Uh, uh, you are met with this individual. Uh, nope, not that one. This one. He comes up, looks the ship up and down, and he extends his his hands in greeting. Demos, my name is Ravis, uh, fourth platoon of the defense of the defense militia, formerly of uh, Tower Three, Station Beta Four. Back when we had nice to a, meet you. back when we had a Station Beta Four. He looks at the ship. Uh, primitive by our standards, but I, this universe seems to be that. Well, if the universe was primitive and easy, you guys wouldn't have a, such a hard time with the uh, Gen Soul above you, would you now? He sort of uh, exhales quickly as a attempting to suppress a smile. Ain't that the truth of it? It's kind of gone to shit actually ever uh, ever since we lost the strategos but we're doing the best we can anyways you're looking to hook this ship up yeah it runs on uh, warp reaction matter antimatter destruction well. basically what our telescope back at home uses <laughs> Wow, I used those in my child's toys growing up. Anyways, uh, he breaks out a couple connect uh, heavy-duty cables. And if, Demos, if you could please roll me a, uh, well, control or daring, whichever way you want to flavor this, plus engineering. Uh, difficulty of one. Uh, yeah, difficulty one to configure things. And uh, this... Uh, someone could roll the Apollo, please, for uh, structure plus and en no engines plus engineering for the ship. I can decon also assist. This. Yeah, I think yeah, decon or the ship could assist one or the other. Whoever has that, I think decon has a good score. Probably. Um, the ship is engines engineering at twelve. And. If uh, Decon can be found under the civilians folder if someone wants to pick her up. Oh, she has an 8 in control and daring. <laughs> yeah, no one's really bothered to activate her too much. Apparently she has monologue yeah. as a focus. Huh, cool. Decon would be uh, 10. So, the ship would be a better chip. Yeah. We'll have the ship help then. Alright. I have the ship help. And... Emergency repairs as a focus? Uh, most definitely, yes. The ship, um, no help. Um, neural link. Actually, sorry, I read up on the rules of neural link. It's actually the ship that gets to reroll. Ah. I believe. Yes, you are accurate on that. Yeah. So if Demos gets one success, then the ship can reroll. Acknowledged. And Demos got Demos two successes. So feel free to reroll the Apollo. Uh, the ships just don't really want to work today, but you still get one momentum. The connectors obviously are not quite compatible, but there is enough local uh, 
small craft support, D, uh, Demos, and some very old, if but familiar, tools that could be used to run a multi, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for, a multi-connection adapter system. Uh, the USS Apollo is now hooked into the ship's energy field as your newfound friend looks up and uh, uh, part of his uh, arm part of his arm flips open to a uh, embedded engineering diagnostic suite he pushes a couple buttons tactical systems have improved by four percent and we are able to get shields operational on at two percent for full coverage however we don't have to worry about 60% of the ship so and he taps away again we are now shielded for at least a couple of their lance strikes we might be able to hit them back a bit harder I have a question for you I know we're few and far in between but are the any of the uh, touched ones still here uh, now the other ones that can do the light show now, uh, please take me meta. What are touched? I forgot. Uh, it's what. Not all of the exos could do what Demos could, uh, where you know he can ramp up a weapon's output or make a cover. Uh, ah, yes, the um, the fancy meta light show stuff. He. Yeah. Yes, they were. Uh, when our strategos was killed, any touched were left. Uh, were made a priority defensive. A defense priority. Actually, for the moment, they currently outnumber us normies. We pro we have roughly um, that's GM running quick math. Uh, we're down to roughly 750 touched, and about 500 of us normals. Okay. Kind of lacking in command structure. Galax technically has seniority but do he has not or his quant his brain's been going dimmer by the century we've this sort of ship yes this ship used to have 25,000 on it you're telling me we have barely over a thousand left well 25,000 there was the initial impact we lost approximately 6,000 there several hundred decided to make their own way in this new universe abandoning their original oaths and several more and the rest of us committed to ensuring that the Elysium would be able to provide support for as long as it could to everyone on the field and then we strayed into Jinsul space and he smirks and sighs and we're down to this many this universe has not been kind do we have a roster of who's left here of course there's three people I'm looking for of course I can and he uh, produces one of those uh, vellum path or vellum laminated posters uh, attaches it to its to his hand interfaces with it and passes you the list uh, yeah so he's gonna punch in three different names so okay. I'll get you those names later okay um, but they all have the last name Demos of course they would alright um, tell you what let me roll um, let me roll 3d100 and for each one that is under 25 if it's over 25 they are present if it's under then they are missing in action it would help if I rolled the command correctly uh, of the three names you enter the first one is missing in action the other two are present He's just gonna look at like, where are they? 
Are they here on the planet? Are they safe? Are they some part of a battalion? What's, what's their designation? What's their position? Uh, let's see. Uh, now, these individuals, were they with you on the Spire? Or in your original... Uh, were they with you in your original position, department, rank, role? Or were they elsewhere on the ship? With serving other functions? This is GM asking. Oh, um... The one that's missing was Sciences. The other two, one of them was within the Acclimation Center, which means that they were freshly born. Ah. Um, and the other one was part of Tactical. Okay. Yes, uh, they have both been assigned. They are both as safe as anyone else, and the ship shudders as there is a, as one of your uh, macro cannons sends another beam skyward. As safe as any of us are, really. Uh, you can find them. Uh, you can find them in what passes for the bridge. Uh, he pauses. Uh, that would be Building Sixty Four, Deck Seven. Uh, District 3. Okay. Thank you. And it's about this time, Demos, that you receive a communication from the uh, USS Arion. It's a bit... Demos here. That would be the that would be the Commander Dolrum reporting that they are ready to initiate Operation Oh God Please Don't Blow Up. <laughs> are you there, Dolrum? Oh yes, here. Oh. <clears throat> What's happening? Um, <laughs> you are ready to initiate the drop. Already. And have just communicated Demos with the. Uh, just contacted Demos to deliver the potentially good news. All right. I will contact him and let him know what the plan is, that we're disguising it and sending it down to him. You're hooking a rock at this planet. More or less. I mean, the probe is self-drivable. Um and capable of landing in the first place. So we're disguising it as a rock and sending it your way. Okay. So those rocks are going to be passing over us, or are they going to actually impact? And the probe diverts downwards. With any luck, the probe will be delivered directly to you, and the small rocks that we are collecting to have it go along with it to make it more appear more like it is uh, just a hunk of space rock should dissipate in the atmosphere okay well hopefully with that that's enough power to get this whatever's left up and out of here that or we do one hell of a punch to that Jin Sul ship if we can't get them to stand down. Alright, well, if you guys are ready to receive it, we'll send it your way. And hopefully you guys can keep the Jinsul busy so they don't even think about looking at the class 3, or scale 3 probe that we're sending towards you. Roger that. I will get back to you once I've talked to the one person in charge and let them know the plan. We're waiting your approval for launch. Understood. Demos out. And uh, Rivan looks... Some help you are. Come on, let's go me. Let's go get... To... Let's go talk to Galax. Some help I am. What do you mean? I brought you the Lithos. Well, yes, now you're throwing it at us, and it's our job to catch it, it seems. Well, no, it's a probe. It's, it has a pilot. Oh. Good. Still, I have to yeah. prepare for it. Hopefully the pilot's good. I hope so, too. It's a significant amount of explosive material. 
Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's get going. The faster we get this over with, the sooner we get this ship out of here. Is I'll that the plan, or is there another vessel we're using? Nope. This is it. The How good many thing... breaches? Several. However, uh, however, we have spent enough time on this hell world that we are a little more resilient, and he taps his noggin. And less reliant on such things such as air. Of course, once we get out and once we get the main uh, cores started up, I'm told that we should have enough power to generate the necessary force fields needed to seal off the rest of the habitable vessel parts of the ship. After that, the repairs can begin. Joy. Not what I signed up for. What's the biggest transwarp hub uh, that uh, has a gate in it? Like, is it big enough to encompass the Elysium, or is the Elysium just too big? Um, if I would say that the Elysium is too... I would probably have to check and start measuring pixels on that scene from Voyager, but I think that the <laughs> transwarp hub is too big to encapsulate something the size of the Elysium. Okay. Just wondering. Okay, let's get a move on. The faster we get going. All right. As you are running through the ship, uh, you're hearing small arms fire or large caliber arms fire, with the sickening or combined with the sickening sound of the Jinsul energy weapons that you faced head on the last the time you had to board the U.S. Uh, to board one of the ships and save the crew of the U.S.S. Enterprise E. Damn spiders just keep infesting. Uh, he, uh, you're not t currently tied into the internal communications network, Demos, um, but you can see how uh, Ravan is. Uh, while he's chatting to you on vocally and is able to sub, or s sub vocally digitally communicate or uh, orders to various forces. I don't even understand why they're even bothering with us at this moment. Seriously, they're going to drain the damn star. Once that thing goes, we'd be eliminated anyways. Do you know anything about they're these people? Weird. Yeah, I pissed them off a little bit. <laughs> Killed a few of them. Didn't really mean to. They're zealots. Yeah, we got that from our initial meetings. Didn't work out so well for either side, and... Would you believe that there were two of these damn cruisers when they first started attacking us? You guys took out the second one, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah. Went up nice and big. Good. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to mess with the Exo, we'll mess you right back. Or whatever they say <laughs> in... Whatever a good Spartan-style uh, phrase would be. Anyways... Uh, you run through the corridors. Um, f they appear to be a fairly secure route. You don't encounter any Jin Sul en route. And you make your way to the armory. Ooh. Rows upon rows of your favorite to Well, your newfound favorite toys um, are sitting in a their individual transmat. Uh, storage units. Now uh, you can see that several of them are empty, man, but twice as many are full. Uh, you recognize uh, you recognize the ten foot tall, uh, three foot wide form of a Gen Two, who has identif who identifies himself as Galax. He seems to be shouting into the ether. But once you enter the arm, once you enter the armory, your internal communication systems automatically tie into the command and control uh, communication systems. Gal Galax is at the point where his he is digitally transmi transmitting information. At the same time, he's shouting it. He <clears throat> look. Ah, you must be Demos. Well, you must be Galax. Normally I'd say it's a pleasure, but 
well, I haven't gotten my lithos yet, so let's wait on that, shall we? Yes, let's, um, first things first, you got some extra power. I'm going to make sure that the Apollo pumps as much as it can give. Mm. So, good. congratulations to that. Yep, we've already noticed Secondly, an increase in weapons. Sorry. Yeah. But then he realizes you weren't done talking and politely stops. Secondly, where are my weapons? He points to a... Let's see. Your Demos accessing transmat records. Uh, though it would be... Uh, he snaps his finger, which has the acoustic sound of a metal trash can being kicked down a street. Um, as three... Um, ah, as three transmats stations illuminate themselves. I believe those are yours. Good. If the gents will get nearby, I want to make sure I can take them out. Uh, if he actually had a working mouth instead of a face grill, he would be smiling. The other huh. thing is, I need those two names, and he's going to pull them up and hand them to him. He's like, I need them here now. You're awfully I don't care what they're doing. You're awfully demandy for someone who just set foot on my on my ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've given me a bit of power, which will be enough to weather a couple more shots. Yeah, I'm demanding because I'm their father. He pauses. Oh. Well, I suppose so. And through the neural sphere, he you see a uh, you see a priority signal jump out from him and navigate through the uh, ether. Uh, immediate, there are two. Uh, it is immediately answered by two priority signals, uh, reaching back to you, uh, Demos. They are, I believe, you have told me that they are female in gender, and mm -hmm. they, uh, there is great joy, and a little bit of annoyance at the fact that they're, they're that they have to give up their duties to come see you, but they are. But they're also pleased, because currently their section of the ship is under fire. So, it'll take them a few minutes to get there. But, hey. Anyways, while we are waiting for that, let's go talk and uh, figure out what is going on with the Borg ship, etc. So, if my understanding is correct, you are disgorging the Borg probe, uh, slapping a holographic... Uh, plating around it and sending it planet side that's about the short and long of it okay um who's the uh pilot for this or do you just want the gm to roll and hope that fate work lands in your favor well there's a borg pilot right oh yeah oh yeah there's a borg pilot okay then the borg pilot will roll and do you want to give the Borg um, a couple extra dice by chance? What's the I difficulty? <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, let's see. To escape, det to land safely, and escaping detection completely, it's going to be difficulty four. Uh, if he makes it with uh, three successes, he will at least enter atmosphere, but draw detection. And if he succeeds with anything less than two successes let's just say complications might come into play. So what I'm hearing is all three momentum for two extra dice. Okay. That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. And I don't have this. Oh, yes? It is a small... Oh, that's a scale three. Hmm, damn. Yeah. That means the Apollo can fit inside the area if the, um, uh, no shuttles in it. Yeah, I suppose I've set that precedent for better or worse. <laughs> no. No, the Apollo's a little too elongated for the even the extended shuttle bays. I'm just saying. Yeah, I the the uh, Apollo is on the shorter side of scale three. Sao Paulo and other, you know, actual Federation ships that you know go out and explore things are on the larger side. 
Okay, uh, so let me just roll some dice here. Four for the shuttle, or four for the pilot, and one for the probe. Could the rocks be helping too? <laughs> oh, like they're just... oh they're like good roll. That, oh, would, that would be a grand total of four successes. Wow, not bad. Holy crap. <clears throat> okay. Oh, this thing is so crazy, it just might work. A deluge, uh, oh, as far as the Jinsul care, a deluge of space rock enter the planet's upper atmosphere. Well, the Jinsul really don't care, after all, they've been peppering the upper atmosphere with ionized blasts of particles for the last several days, if not longer. So what do they care about a few rocks? Well, one of these rocks happens to be containing a specialized carrier, roughly a three tons, I believe, of lithium. The USS Lobster. So we are sending a rock lobster. Oh, God. <laughs> if you smell what it's cooking. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, in ways that I had ex expected this story to go, this is not one of the foreseen permutations. You're welcome. Yep. But hey, that's to why quote, I love you guys. To quote a famous little bear from Card Captor Sakura, always expect the unexpected. I try, but you just keep coming up with new versions of unexpected. <laughs> you just haven't figured out just how depraved we all are. No, I think I know, and that's the problem. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, back in the armory. Uh, where's Demos's token? Let's put Demos where he needs to be. Uh, Demos, uh, just for the fun of it, you have suited up with all your weapons. Just Ooh. because I think it's thematically awesome, and provides that, a good. He is a. That's a terrifying look. I know, right? And as uh, you catch eyes with Galax, who's busy coordinating all fire, all fire forward, and uh, trying to target a weak spot in the Jin Sul's armory. There you are. As a uh, two other. Um, Two other exos enter, and I'm sure you can find and give me proper tokens for them at a later date. But let's yeah. say one is that, and the other one is that. I like those tokens. Yes, it was a good thing I planned ahead at least on that part and came up with found several exo tokens. It helps when it's a major player character race. <laughs> Uh, they take one look at you, quickly look up and down, and they both immediately tackle you with the force of a 300-pound uh, linebacker. <laughs> I just imagine it's like hearing sounds of two Priuses crashing against a cement wall. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, it's a violent and yet affectionate reunion as you meet your two daughters. <laughs> He just reaches down and picks them both up in a great big hug. He's like, Okay, I'm glad you're safe. We're glad hey. you're safe. <laughs> How have you guys been? Uh, it's been better. We've been better, Father. Um as sorry I have their names on the completely wrong screen which is now covered up with everything I believe one of them was Sierra uh, Celine Celine as a Celine uh, let's just call her the one in blue and gold uh, Celine um, nods her head uh, pats the uh, dual pistols that she's carrying would you believe that this is the first time that Galax let us into this part of the ship 
He was worried you'd probably take everything and go out and save the whole day. Oh, let me guess. That's why you're here? I mean, I've... I mean, sister here has taught me some... has told me some stories. Is it really true that you fixed the entire... Uh, the entire cohesion drive in two days just by yourself and a molecular... Re a single dermal uh, molecular regenerator? It was actually, it was, uh, it was only a day, and it, the regenerator cut out halfway through it. I had to use my fingers afterwards. A, m a sort of a gleeful laugh emanates from uh, the, the one with the horns, a.k.a. Iris. She's, uh, unlike uh, Celine, she is carrying a very old, but, but well-maintained uh, rifle. And she's Listen. about uh, she's about to emit a what I'm sure is a very witty re retort when Galax bursts in with the uh, delicacy of a freight train. Right, this is very touching. I'm touched. Everyone's touched. Stop touching each other. Let's save the damn day. As he pulls for as he um, makes a square in as he touches his uh, index and thumbs together to on each hand to form a square and pulls diagonally to pull open a holographic view screen um, showcasing a series of rocks coming in and appearing to burn up on re-entry. I'm guessing this is the lithos, Mr. Demos? Yeah, one of them should be actually a Borg probe. I have no idea what Borg what the Borg are, I'm sure they're a nice, friendly species. <sighs> oh, very. He holds up his hands and he, like, lets the nanites kind of shift around. Like, yeah, they, um, upgrades. He, he literally goes, ah! What are those? They're not nanites. I uh, Newfangled technology. Damn it. <laughs> when I was forged, a Gen 2 meant something. And now look at me. Gen 3s, Gen 4s. Hell, they're talking about Gen 6s. Once everything is repaired. If you ask me, that's a pipe dream. <sighs> he just shakes his head. Just give me a good hammer and a thorn any day. Well, let's first get this ship out of here and into safety. <laughs> yes. Girls, Demos. Get as many militia as you can. Get, uh, I think, Bath 57 Theta is the closest down to the forge. We got some Jin Sul down there. Make yourself. And... Hmm? I was just gonna say, any of the injured that can't fight, load them up to the Apollo. They're gonna encounter an artificial intelligence named Decon. Let her know that D Demos had sent them. Right. He doesn't make any mention motion of any of that, or who's going if anyone's going to be on, as he turns back and assumes that the Jinsu will be taken care of. Okay, and you were saying the Jinsu are where? As, uh, Celine pull, does a similar motion and pulls up a cross-section of that area of the ship. Well, we are here, and the Jinsu are between, well, 50, Dex 58, 50, or they are buildings 56, 57, and halfway through to the forge. Thankfully, the bulwark around the for around the engine systems are still operational. So, good. Yeah, it's going to be a fight. And she, without asking, uh, on her way out, uh, she decides to reach into one of the transmats and pulls out one of the. Um, I think it. Yeah, what were the weapons again? The giant, the giant, semi, the giant uh, semi-automatic. Oh, the light machine gun I use. Yeah, Thunderlord. Yeah, that's the one she pulls out. <laughs> and it's about you know, she's about to get an, ad an admonishment from her sister, but th after a few blinks, she decides to grab the uh, sniper rifle. Like, look, I need you two to promise me something. If you start getting hurt and you can't keep going, get behind me. The two of them look. Oh, Father, you've been gone a long time. 
This is our ship. You're a guest. You get behind us when you get wounded. And he'll just tilt his head down and look at them like, are you serious? <laughs> He's like, I may be a guest aboard this ship, but I know every inch of it. You knew it when it was in one piece. I knew it would have drifted through the barrier, too. I only got separated after that. So in other words, what you're saying, Father, is we'd better not get injured, otherwise this is just going to see who is going to be the most stubborn bastard of us all, eh? And I'm going to win that. And he's going to start heading to uh, where the Jensen were reported. Good luck with that, Father. As they fall in step uh, behind you, for the moment. Uh, And if there were more players, we would have some epic fight scenes, but... That would just take up a lot of time. So, um, if Mr. Demos, just to see how badass you are, uh, roll me, let's just say, three control security tests, please, and how well you do on them depends on how badass you get to be. Okay. Uh, on the security. on the ship side. Now, while Demos is doing that, back on the You're ship. Oh, sorry. You're gonna go. Sorry, you're gonna get three threat because I'm gonna add a dice to each roll. Oh, fun. Uh, back on the station, or back on the bridge of the USS Lunette, or not the Lunette? The Lunette is gone. It's the USS Arion. Yeah, the Lunette boomed. Yeah, it went boom. You are keeping an eye on the situation when Ensign Usha pipes up from the science. I'm sorry, I just saw six successes from Mr. Demos. Oh my god. So how much momentum is that? (laughs) There's there's no momentum associated with these roles. He just gets to be as badass as possible. Let me know when I can montage this. Yeah, I (laughs) will. I have a scenario in my head. (laughs) I will get back to that momentarily. Ensign Usha pipes up from the console. Uh, sir, I'm detecting a, a few ships. I'm detecting three small craft exiting warp outside our, our nearby, sir. What is their ship signatures? I do not... Um, let me double check. And I don't have the tokens for these because I forgot to upload them. Okay, well, uh, sir, they appear to... Uh, they're Herogen, sir. Well, that's interesting out here. Very. And, um, because the GM has just realized he hasn't uploaded a few things, um, Demos, if you could do your awesome montage, and then we'll take a proper bio break. Hello, Demos. Hello, my baby. Hello, my dog. You're muted. It is time to be a badass, and Demos is muted. Very well. Uh, we will come back to Demos's um, moments of badassery after a properly scheduled bio break. So we will see you guys in about 15 minutes. Top of the hour. Yep, yes, top sir. of the hour. And we are back for the second time, and probably for the last time. Anyways, uh, we cut to, because I promised you that scene right before break, and he wasn't around, 
we'll have it now. If Mr. Demos, how badass do you want to be? Yeah, so the first time they go down a hallway and they get, you know, encounter the Gen Sul, um, I think a four is a good badass level, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not over the top, but it's decent. Yeah. Um, him and his daughters, they're just taking shots of the Gen Sul and they're landing each and every hit. A couple of shots, you know, hit back and um, mostly hit the cover, but they keep pushing on forward. Um the second encounter they get, it's a two, so I'm figuring, like, okay, maybe Demos takes a few hits, um, keeping his daughter safe, and they also, you know, try and keep him safe, too. It's becoming more of a competition now of who can keep who the safest. Um, but I, I think the six is uh, the one where they get near the, um, the landing pad where the uh, probe's gonna be at, and there's, like, this big Gen Sul warrior in their way. Demos just does something very on Starfleet like, which good news, he's not in his uniform, so he's not kinda reminded. Pulls out Thunderlord and keeps firing at the big old target, center mass, until he punches a hole through its armor, and then he shoves Thunderlord in and keeps firing out the other side at any other targets, and he's using it as a battering ram to knock any of the chips around. <laughs> Pretty sure that is not taught as as a standard combat doctrine within uh, Starfleet security courses, but this really isn't a standard Starfleet security uh, situation, oh, is it? No, 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 he's not in uniform. He's not on a Starfleet ship in a Gen Sul or uh, dicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're rather dicks. All right, uh, you make your you reach your way to the shuttle bay as the um, as the Borg, as the uh, holographic camouflage uh, finally gives out, uh, revealing the lithium and the Borg. Uh, there are some defensive systems on the ship that assist you in clearing the Jinsul from the shuttle bay. Uh, the pilot steps down. Uh, this one appears to have been mostly deborgified. Uh, so he still has a few implants, but they're mostly subdermal. Uh, he uh, reaches across uh, and touch. Tu uh, he speaks to you through your interlink connection. You have our uh, Verity sends this as a gift, and ex and hopes that you are able to spend some more time together. Thank you, friend, and do look forward to it. Are you going to get out of here safely, or do you need to take refuge in the Apollo? We don't have many of these probes left. I think Verity will be very mad if I not, don't make a honest attempt to escape. Uh, if I was briefed properly, I will take a... And assuming everything goes according to plan, we'll be able, this should be enough lithium to power their jump or their engines, and we will be able... Once in once void born, I will take off then. Excellent. Well, stay safe, friend. And you as well, Demos. And well, he just looks to his daughters as uh, he starts shaking both his hands and to try and get the blood off them. I'm like, oh crap. This is going to be a problem if uh, Delvrum sees this. Uh, so, Dad, who's. or Father, who is Verity? Something to discuss about after we're not being shot at and we get the ship in orbit. How about that? Deal. Okay. And both girls exchange slightly knowing looks. Anyways, we're going to cut to the system as out in space. Uh, the situation has become slightly more complex with the arrival of three Herogen warships. Are they coming towards us, or are they pursuing the Jinsul? They are heading towards the planet. Ops, hail the Herogen. <clears throat> On screen, sir. And it would... What... Eh. Hero oh. uh, the individual that pops up is decidedly not Herogen, but rather an Exo. 
although he is wearing the armor of a Herogen, uh, complete with hunt markings. A known Herogen ship. This is uh, Commander Dolrum of the USS Arion of the Federation. I am Seth, Alpha of this pack. Looking at you and seeing that you're an Exo, you must be here, here for the same reasons we are. If I, if my, if my, if the, if my packmates' tales of the Federation are true, well, the Starfleet and Federation are true, then we are here for decidedly different reasons. Well, we did just deliver an entire uh, three tons worth of lithium to the mothership down there because one of our crewmen is currently on on the ship trying to help it defend it. He takes uh, he he pauses. Uh, his uh, red eye or the eyes of the Oculus around his red eyes widen ever so slightly as he takes in this. So you intend to save the Elysium? We intend to at least assist in getting its people to safety. Due to us already in, uh, encountering the creature no creatures known as Jinsul, who are currently firing, our ships are of no match, and officially, we cannot engage the Jinsul, so we've been working to assist the Elysium with well, at least giving him a fair shot. Very well. I wish you luck with that. I hope that after everything is said and done that the Elysium will fly once more. Your and intentions to help the Elysium or to get rid of the Jinsul? Neither. Although one could say they're one and the same. Neither, Commander. We have become... The reason that I am Alpha is due to the excellent craftsmanship of their onboard weapon system. When I received notification, and he pulls out a very similarly uh, carbon copy of the of the uh, laminated paper message that Demos received. When I received this, I realized that my treasure that my weapon supply might not be around forever. And if my pack is to continue to hunt more and more dangerous targets, proper weapons must be secured physically. I think they could be one, our goals could be one and the same. Uh, if the Elysium is destroyed, you don't have any more weapons helping to defend it and getting it to fly again get more weapons roll me, pl roll me presence command please uh, and this is going to be opposed with his Ooh. diplomacy as a focus diplomacy will work and you need to you need two successes Presence command. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a threat for a third die. Okay. And I have a focus. And I there's the three successes you need. Do I get a momentum out of that? Yes, you do. <clears throat> Very well, commander. We we will instead hunt Jin Sul. Do you have any? Do you believe that they would be worthy prey? Considering they're wanting to destroy stars and therefore all the life in the systems in which the stars are there, therefore limiting the amount of prey that are available for Krogen, I think they make for very mighty good prey considering they are destroying the rest of it. He smiles and then the smile distends. Uh, showing that he has uh, there's been a lot of internal reworking on his uh, mouth f to make it less humanoid and more canine 
more uh, actually probably closer to that of a saber-toothed tiger very well the hunt shall be the hunt shall be one of tail the hunt shall be one for the ages we'll make sure we're recording for your tales happy hunting and with that the three warships peel away from the planet's surface and streak towards the Jinsul supercruiser what follows is a uh, close up uh, wolf pack style hunt where all three ships work in near perfect unison to cripple the Jin Sul's supercruiser even further, knocking out what few weapons batteries it had before causing a severe uh, structural breach and then literally ramming one of their ships through in a la 40k boarding torpedo style. I'm just watching on the view, view screen. Well, I'm happy I, I was able to redirect them to the Jinsul instead of the Elysium. That would be quite another thing for the Elysium to have to deal with. Yeah, that's a really good plan. <laughs> GM goes, aw, shucks. <laughs> You're welcome. But hey, this session appears to just be how badass you people are going to be, so let's be badass. Uh, speaking of badass, the uh, what militia is left in this area on the ship, uh, so about ten or so, have all congregated around the shuttle bay, 57 uh, Theta, I believe it was. And you form an armored convoy of a long stream of stasis containers on on what is the equivalent of I'm assuming there's some sort of grav train uh, to get around in the uh, underworks of the city it is through mm -hmm. this that you are able to transport the uh, lithium straight into the engine core it's the engine core is not online right it's, not. it's like it's off right now yeah it looks like okay. this it just has no lightning lights or anything of the sort uh, it is a um. Uh, ten-story superstructure uh, where uh, two hemispherical uh, components almost touch tips and it is through the tips that all the magic happens. Okay. Um, I have something in mind when it does go online. Okay. Um, it's not going to be too debilitating or anything to any of the vessels, but it's just something for the Federation vessels. Okay. So, as the, uh, where is Sister One? Nope, that's Seth. We don't need Seth. Sister Two. And Demos. I have far too many characters here. <laughs> uh, I really should archive the stuff I'm not using, but then I'd never find them again. There he is, the Slayer. <laughs> hey, did, any the gens, did any of the Jinsu recognize me, by the way? No. Um, Dang. It's an expansive civilization. And I don't think you left Mendy in the way of survivors. True. Enough last time that they nicknamed me the Slayer. That is right. I believe that they did. I'll have to make that note on your character. So, anyways. <clears throat> the first of these stasis containers of lithium is very carefully unloaded, uh, placed into the f uh, feeding, uh, placed into a trough-like system, at which point it is immediately um, broken. D uh, da d ah, I I had a good term for it and I've forgotten it already. Basically, it is. Beam not dematerialize it is where it is take where it takes a block and then strings it out so that it is a chain that is a molecule thick and it is basically pulled basically how it is is that the a molecular chain of lithium is pulled through the engine similar to a rip cord where all the uh, um, lithium ions connect in such rapid succession it's very similar to a strike anywhere match 
Okay. <clears throat> Roughly it ta about a third of the way through the second ton, uh, the engine begins to spark. Uh, lights begin to flicker in a, a, in a spiral pattern, uh, starting at the base of the sphere and working arc or achingly slowly to the uh, tip of each. Uh, small hums and vibrations kick off underneath your feet. You didn't realize how much you missed this feeling. It's not, it's a more of a, um, where a Federation ship is a, you know, low hum or maybe a vibration. This engine feels more like a, like a lion purring. Most of the time, I like him. Sorry, I would just like to imagine like if any organics, like any people, were in there, it feels like thunder in your chest. Yeah. <clears throat> but for you, it is a vibration that is quite pleasant, almost comforting for an engineer of, of your caliber. Uh, both of the girls uh, sheath their weapons, and in doing so, accidentally trigger their transmat. So the sniper rifle and the um, uh, submachine gun vanish much to their uh, frustration but the engine look right there he points to the middle of it there that's where the coalescence is going to begin and as if almost on cue uh, the third it is now two and a half tons loaded and the coalescence is beginning to form and you've probably imagined this far more thoroughly than I have, Demos, so feel free to describe it. So, the room uh, lights up similar to how the picture is there, and uh, lightning striking, but the lightning goes from the white and it starts shifting to a blue pattern. Um, they're no longer striking each other walls, they're striking each other. And as the last bit of fuels load in, a massive bolt from both sides hits dead center, and the whole reactor walls on both sides lights up as there is just a blue orb suspended between them, as if kind of tugging back and forth, trying to decide where to go, but it's being held in place, and power kicks all in. Aboard the USS Arion and the Slipnears, your sensors turn into the Omega symbol. On the bridge, we see this, and it's like, oh... Jesus. And sadly, uh, we don't have a captain. Neither of us, neither <laughs> of us can override the Omega. Neither of you can. Which is going Actually, to be... Would they even know about the Omega? Because they're not captain rank. Precisely. They're not... They don't know what the Omega directive is. <clears throat> But uh, I feel like this time in the future that would probably have gotten passed down because by this time there's a lot of commanders that are in command of ships. Let's take this offline and we'll f and I'll I'll let me uh, figure out lore uh, between what happened between Voyager and now and then we'll figure that out. But for okay. the time being, um, there is this symbol. Uh, however. Um, the, the system, uh, after roughly five minutes of this system, com this complete system lockout, uh, the Arion's computers beep three times, and the entire system reboots. Uh, the starship comes back online, however you find that long-range sensors have been disabled, and no attempts, or no, uh, it is impossible to or sorry, any attempts to re-enable the long-range long-range sensors have been disabled by an unknown protocol at the moment. Uh, protocol Omega Ten. Dorom will look at Kivan. Well, that's not good. This is something I've never run into. Me either. And something tells me that no matter how hard we try, we're not going to be able to bypass this. I have a feeling I wouldn't even want to attempt it because I'm afraid of something. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, well, sorry, go ahead. I was just looking. He went. Well, we'll just inform the captain and include it in our logs and expect a reprimand later because we broke the ship. Well, we can get it fixed. Oh, I have no doubt in our ability to get it fixed. Who knows? We'll we'll see what happens. Right now, we have no long range sensors. This is not a good thing. Short range sensors, on the other hand, are enough to pick up the uh, shaking of the. Uh, sorry, let me start this again. Uh, Demos, the thunder in your chest that is permeating the entire uh, superstructure of the Elysium uh, begins to uh, increase in magnitude. The uh, command Nuosphere that you have been connected to, where you've been monitoring communications between the uh, key positions, so the ship, uh, is completely overridden by a virtual shout of Galax going, Yeehaw! As the ship Im uh, breaks off the shackles of the Class Y planet and goes airborne. Seeing that, or hearing that on the uh, on the Arion, uh, Dolrum will order the it on screen. On screen, I wish I could say that uh, th uh, that the Elysium, uh, big as she is, um, has maintained a graceful appearance uh, in its time trapped on this planet while under constant fire from above. And I wish that I could say that it has maintained its uh, stately presence, but sadly, it l bears more in common with a 40k Space Hulk on the exterior than it does an Elysium starship. Uh, several, uh, several parts of the Elysium are unable to withstand the uh, sudden shift in uh, G-forces, but they were damaged superstructures anyways, and they're really only the external parts. The uh, Demos, your Newell Sphere, reports only approximately 5% of the external ship is left behind. That's probably acceptable losses. No life signs, or no uh, life signs were left, or no exo life signs were left behind, which is a plus. They were prepared for this. Uh, Demos is uh, kicking into engineer mode and he's just battering down the hatches, establishing redundancy force fields because now they have literally unlimited energy. He is making sure everything is shored up, uh, increasing structural integrity across the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, you are joined with several other uh, engineer turned security as they fall in, fall in lockstep beside you, initiating several, initiating similar orders in chorus perfect harmony so that the ship is as secure as possible. There are still some sections that are open to the vacuum of space, but for the most part, the ship is airborne, and soon to be voidborne. Okay. Galax, do we have navigations hooked up? Navig ah, the thing that tells us where to go. Right. As close as possible, yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it the same amount of pinpoint accuracy. But the boffins tell me that that should get us close enough to where we want to go. Anywhere not here would be preferred. I have a star in mind. We can do a geodesic fold. It's going to be dangerous. Especially if the stars already been compromised, it may collapse it. We're going straight through the one that they're eating, aren't we? Mm-hmm. I like it. Unless Let's we... do it. And I'm going to radio to Decon. Uh, Decon acknowledges. Like Decon, did... Decon, did anyone board the vessel? 
That uh, was there an EXO? No, uh, there are currently twenty EXOs here. Although I suppose we should prob, as if we're counting uh, whole numbers, I'd say we have about fifteen. Okay, that's a little dark, but um. I'm gonna send a Borg drone your way. Please don't hurt him. Remember that he is liberated. He is not responsible for what happened to your empire. You hear the uh, gnashing of synthetic teeth. Yes, sir. I need you to get back to the Arion with him, because we're gonna attempt a geodesic fold. He won't survive if uh, he stays aboard. Okay. Yes, sir. And I expect to see you back at the station, Decon. Ah, Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, Demos to Dolrum. This is Dolrum, go ahead. It's a mighty fine Where? ship that you have flying there. Oh, we'll get a looking all pretty again soon enough. We're going to be attempting a geodesic fold with this dying star. There is a significant chance that the star is going to implode after we had we go through, so you need to get out of here. I'm sending back the Apollo with Decon and the uh, Interlink Borg member. As soon as the Apollo is uh, with our ship caravan, we will be exiting the system. I'm also going to let uh, the Horogen ships know to follow suit. Horogen? What? Let's just say I did some convincing on an Exo that was an Alpha of a three Herosian ships. Instead of attacking the Elysium or us, I managed to convince them to destroy the Jensul ship that was above your... that was firing upon the Elysium. Oh. A Herogen Exo. That sounds like an awful idea. Okay. <sighs> Children. And he just looks at his <laughs> girls like, never joining the Herogen. Forbidden. What's a Herogen? Yeah, I'll tell you later. You're going to have a lot to tell us when this is all said and done. Yeah, it's been a few years. Yes, it has. We're going to... Okay. Let's attempt a geodesic fold. Okay. Or as we like to call it, a starburst. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Literally, because the star's going to explode. Quite probably. Jesus. This one will. Does it usually result in a star exploding? No, I'm just thinking it's going to result because they've never attempted it with a red dwarf <laughs> or a red star. Especially that. since it's being accelerated to collapse. This is going to be a fun one. Oh boy. As soon yeah. as... Oop, go ahead. Yeah, normally it just probably burns the closest planet to the star normally. Yeah, yeah. but... Uh, Those <laughs> planets are usually you know, insignificant. You know, they they typically angle it in a way so it, it just vents all of the excess heat you know, or solar flare, the massive giga flare into, you know, empty space. But we're not but, worried about that right now. Right. Uh, uh, one quick warning uh, sent out to the uh, Herogen, or the Exo Dash Herogen hybrid thing. Monstrosity. Let's just agree that he's a monstrosity and move on from there. Uh, he acknowledges that this was a good hunt. And that the Jin Sul pro provided some very unique trophies for their wall. My response is, there's plenty more for where that came from. I hope that, I hope that your hunting continues to be fruitful. He doesn't respond, he just, uh, uh, he raises a fist, uh, knuckles out, and cuts the channel. Uh, three Herogen ships depart as the, uh, Jin, as the Jin Sul supercruiser begins to explode violently from within, and begins to drift slowly towards the planet. The Elysium decides that why let, why let gravity have all the fun? and sends a couple extremely powerful bursts back, uh, annihilating it entirely. Uh, the SS Apollo departs from the uh, Shuttle Bay 3, and Decon approaches the, S the USS Arion and 
she uh, hails. Lieutenant Demos requests that I request permission to come aboard. I am in possession of several other exos, who, who I find far more preferable than any of you meatbags. And she does have the Borg, right? Yes, yes, she does. Good, good, she, good. she doesn't talk about the Borg. She doesn't mention the Borg. The Borg just goes, I'm here too. At which point, she just goes, shh, you don't matter. Well, Decon, thank you for... <laughs> well, Decon, thank you for letting us know that you have arrived. Assume the point position and begin to initiate slipstream corridor entrance. All right. Stop that, Siri. Um, okay. <laughs> My computer started talking to me after I tried clicking the wrong button. I hate it when that happens. Do you want to go into Slipstream now? <laughs> no, Siri, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, a, math, a gaping blue hole opens in the fabric of reality as the two Slipnears, the SS Apollo and the USS Arion, enter leaving the uh, uh, the Elysium to do a nosedive into a red dwarf star. And attempting a geodesic fold. Yes, attempting a geodesic fold. Uh, where are you planning on the destination being? Uh, the gateway for Cerberus Station, is, is it hooked up to a star? Uh, no, it's not hooked up to a star. Um, the no. no, it's a subspace tear that has been amplified uh, by use. Okay. So, sadly, not. However, there are several stars in the general vicinity. Of the... yeah, whichever one was uninhabited. Okay. So say, there I'm... is a star outside the Carceri Nebula that does not seem to be inhabited. Indeed. So. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Uh, do me a favor, Demos. Can you roll me a 1d20? And do you want low or high? Uh, it's, it's, Star, it's Star Trek Adventures. Yeah. Low has to be good. Okay. Can I use a determination if the roll sucks? Sure. <laughs> use that determination. Yeah, that I was going to say, you, oh, you, you that... said low. I'm like, it's going to be high. Yeah. <sighs> Dang. Okay. I thought it into being. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, that was the collective hopes of everyone just wishing that it would be a critical. We were just thinking the wrong. It just turned out to be the wrong critical. Uh, that was a 20, and after spending determination, it was a 14. Uh, the Elysium enters the star and with as much grace as possible. There are a few... Curti a few um, weak fire or weak barrages exchanged broadsides a few weak broadsides exchanged between it and the Jin Sul supercarry that is draining the sun however whoever is navigating this behemoth of a vessel has decided to be a little um, extra assholey and has plotted the entrance to ensure that the coronal mass ejection will cap the Jin Sul's uh, supercarrier in its center mass, eliminating it before eliminating it completely from the universe. However, the jump does not go quite according to plan, whether it's damage to the Elysium itself uh, or the fact that the star is a waning red dwarf star, just not providing the right. Um, the right energy that's needed, uh, you end up roughly, uh, let's say, 300 light years away from your planned destination in the middle of, in the middle of a void, no inhabited systems nearby. And the system that you run, the system that you run across, does not appear to be inhabited either. It is only a single star, uh, a single red dwarf star, and a hot Jupiter. Alright. Uh, 300 light years off. Okay. 
Do I know the direction of where Cerberus Station's at? That would take a little bit of time, but I will say that within a couple of days you're able to properly orient yourself and a successful jump will get you home to the station for well, about a day or so, a couple of days after the USS Arion's return. But you can certainly spend that quality t But as you have been reunited with your uh, daughters, I don't think you're in any rush. No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and back on, back on the station, um, we cut back to operations. Actually, we'll cut back to the armory. Where Galax has summoned a group of the most senior leaders of the Elysium. Well, we're spaceborn again. Uh, there's a few cheers. He claps his hand, and it all just everything sounds like um, a percussion, a percussion ah, a percussion orchestra that has gone horribly off tempo. And, Mr. Demos, we have you and your Starfleet to thank. Yeah, it's actually part of the job. Pick up a distress call, we go and help. Good. By the way, pretty sure it'll be okay. Starfleet might have a field day with everything. But, I'm inviting you to take up residence around Cerberus Station to repair the Elysium. There's enough resources, hopefully, that we can start getting some major repairs done. And it can also serve as a rallying point for the rest of our people. He nods slowly. His joints creak as uh, flakes of rust uh, fall to the floor. However much corrosion it takes to rust this type of armor only indicates how long it's been, or how long he's been around. We accept. For now. However, we, this is a stopping point. This universe is different than what we are used to, and we wish to exp I believe someone will rise up, uh, take on the take on the role of Strategos again and once our command structure is rebuilt we will sally forth and see what this galaxy has to offer well this galaxy has a lot more life than when we were from I only it's, it's I, ho <laughs> I hope that it has more life or I hope that it has more friendly life than what we've currently encountered you should take a tour of the Federation space then. Greet them. They have a multitude. They have Vulcans, Denobulans, Bullions, Ferengi, Pakalids, Klingons. There's a long list. There is more members in different alien cultures in the Federation than we ever encountered. <laughs> I shall take that under advisement. No guarantees. Right now, we just need to ensure that we, our people are safe. At least now, there's a yes. home that they can come back to. Yeah, we can send out the word that the Elysium is going to be restored. She won't be as powerful as she once was, considering the technology to make most of her missing systems doesn't exist anymore. Uh, well, so. we'll make do. We have a we have some fine engineers. And if you're interested, oh. Mr. Demos, the position as a position for one, for one of your caliber could be recreated. I'll have to get back to you on that. Fine. He nods. But we have the Hermes drives active. I'm happy. Let's get this back into safe space and get the repairs underway. We can worry about all the politics later. Uh, yes, 
Hopefully a new strategist will be picked before we make it to your Cerberus. I have no patience for politics. That's fair. Mm. It's kind of annoying. Mm. But I'm going to see my daughters now. Understandable. And we are going to... Uh, does anybody on, or does Dalrum or Keevan have anything they wish to do to wrap up the episode? Dalrum has a scene with Kivan in his office back in the station. Okay. And this sounds like a perfect time to showcase the new captain's office set. Courtesy. Even though I'm not the commanding officer. Yeah, you're not, but close enough. Courtesy of Falk on DeviantArt, Falk 2009 check them out yeah anyways um, you are at your desk Mr. Daldrum when Keevan walks in yes sir you summoned for me I did please sit down okay do you like anything to drink as I stand up to go to the replicator not necessary two teas Replicator produces two teas. Each of them have been, uh, each of them has been specifically crafted to your particular tastes. I pass one to Kivan. So, here recently, the captain and I have been talking and reviewing records, and we're curious why you've never gone for the commander's test. Honestly, I mean, I've considered it, but, well, to be qu quite frank, um, I, I've been very happy with what I've been doing with engineering and then the teaching prior to being on Cerberus just because of a incident right at the end of the Bor initial Borg hostilities. Let's just say that I kind of got burned by the situation. That's fair enough. Well, we'd like you to reconsider taking it, seeing how you've taken pretty good command of the Eros. Arion. Arion. I don't know why I blinked on that one. The Arion and have been accelerating in all of your leadership roles here on the station. We would like to extend the offer to administer the command test. Quite frankly, I'm honored, sir. Um, yeah, I mean, I've started to really feel a hominess, if that, you know, that's the best term I've got for it, being with the station and the crew. And, you know, I haven't, it's been a long time since I've felt this way. I agree. The station's finally starting to feel like a community, a home. And as the boulevard has started to pick up with business and we've started to have more commerce throughout the station, it's finally alive with hustle and bustle. It's a good place. And we need good people to run it. Well, yes, sir. I mean, um, between yourself and the captain, um, yeah, I'll start going over the details of the commander's test and I have when you when when you give me the word I will go for it noted I'll inform the captain as well that you would like to go through with the test I think it's a good thing it would be great to see you as a full commander I appreciate that hearing that commander Dolorum so well that's everything official I had to talk about, but seeing as we have some time, why don't you inform me how everything's coming along personally, he, with your personal life here on the station? I figured that's the spot where we can fade to conversation. Yes. Meanwhile, uh, the captain is in his own ready... his, his own version of this office. Uh, with the uh, opening of the gravimetric catapult and the 
uh, increase in civilian traffic, uh, the amount of paperwork he's had to do has gone up significantly to say that he is stressed about this new development is quite understandable uh, to the point where he is consider actively considering hiring a yeoman and he continues to type away at the keyboard when all of a sudden the Elysium uh, ejects itself from the nearby star outside the Carceri Nebula and every single screen on the stir server station goes into the blue Omega symbol Captain Crawford just goes what the fuck oh no and that's when we cut it and so there ends a very uh, brief session but I think it was a fun one just give a chance for some players to act a little more badass than they have recently so thank you for players for playing thank you for watchers for watching and we will be back next Friday with some probably a little more light light-hearted episode of some sort or another until next time, bye-bye.